In this video, we're going to look at the limit supremum and limit infimum of sets. This is part two. We've covered pages one and two in part one. So we're going to jump straight to part three with an example. Let's let a n equal this interval if n is odd and a n equal this interval if n is, b is even. And we want to show that the limit infimum of a n is actually the set uh, that contains the zero element. Okay, so by definition, this is the limit in femur. Okay, so from here to here, we're going to write out a few of these intersections, right? So this union stays the same. And when we write this out, then it looks something like this. So depending upon whether n is even or odd, you know, we start with one of those. But they end up all looking like this. So it's the interval from you know, minus 1 over j to 1, intersect this interval, intersect this interval, but, and it goes on forever. But notice as, as n gets larger, you know, this shrinks to 0, and this shrinks to 0. So ultimately, in limit, we're taking the intersection of 0, 1, and minus 1, 0, right? And that's for any n it ends up being that. So the intersection of those two is actually just the zero element. And then when you union the same thing over and over and over, you just, um, you get zero. Okay, now to be more explicit, and that's part of the goal of these videos is to really give a good intuitive feel of what's going on. So if we, if we look at this piece here, so let's let n equal one, then this is the, this is what these intersections look like, right? And then that's two, and there's three, and there's four. But as you go on to infinity, again, this shrinks down, this shrinks down, and it ends up, the intersection of those is just zero. When n is two, it just means you start at two, and you go to three and four. But ultimately, again, those shrink down to negative one, zero, and zero, one. And the, inter the only th intersection in there is zero. So then when you union all these up, and that's what this piece is doing. You're union in the same thing, so it is zero. Now, the uh, let's show that the limit supremum of a n is this, so it's minus one one. And and I and I wrote this. This is the definition of limit supremum. Oh, I I put it here because I want to fit it on one page. Um, so this is what we have to figure out. So let's write out a few of these cases here. Okay, so when n is 1, 1, and then we're union, and then 2, and then 3, and 4. And so the, when you union, it means you take everything. So what's the biggest one to the right? We have, well, a closed bracket 1, there's a half, a 1. So a closed bracket 1 is always going to be the biggest one on the right. And then on the left, we have minus 1, minus 1. That's a little smaller, minus one. So the union of these is, is this. It's going to be the biggest one. Now, in part one, we called that B1. You know, um, when n is two, we start at two, right? Because it's even, and we go to three and four. But when you union these, you kind of you you find the the lowest number, which is always going to be minus. You know, open bracket minus one. And then the biggest number on the right was well, one. It's always going to be closed bracket one, so that's this. Now, that's what these generally look like. They're all going to be the same no matter what n you start at. And so when you intersect all these, so when you intersect all the bn's, it's always this. Now, one more page. And, and monotone sequence of sets is actually a pretty large topic. Okay, and we're going to try to introduce it here. So let's let a n be a non -in it's non increasing if the next set is a subset of the previous set. So non increasing means decreasing. So it's kind of getting smaller, potentially smaller. And uh, if a n is non decreasing or increasing, you know, if a n is a subset of the next one. Okay. So let's assume that we're working in situation one, where we have a decreasing set, or you can also think of it as non-increasing. They're technically different, but I kind of think of them as the same. 
that means we're okay non-increase it means we're getting a little smaller so a1 is big and then and then a2 and then a3 and a n so each time we're getting a little bit smaller of a set right and it goes on for infinity now if we here's a couple properties that we need so if we look at the intersection of a1 a2 a3 and to infinity isn't that going to be the same as if we just start at some n and then look at the intersection of all these I mean they all kind of get to whatever that smallest set is so those are the same and also in reverse if we look at the union of these sets so let's let's start at some n and then union that with the next one and the next one and the next one isn't that really just the set that we start at because it's the largest everything else gets smaller so the union of them is really just that set now let's look at the limit and femum of a n so the limit and femum of these sets by definition it's this but notice this intersection here j going from n to infinity but we said that's really just like starting at one right so we can put that in here but then we lose our index for n right so we're actually unioning the same set there's no index in infinitely many times so you just get it back now this so now for aj so we can then we can use this property so the one set a n is actually equal to the union of of that set when it gets bigger so we're going to stick this in here which is what this is now I wish I could have done this a little bit differently so we put that in here but really I kind of switched those n and j's to be consistent with oh what the true definitions are the way they use n and j but we use this property to stick it in for just this a and then we get this but then this is the limit supremum of a n so that says on a monotone non-decreasing sequence of sets the infimum and the supremum limit infimum and limit and supremum are the same and that's just we'll just call that the limit of a n now in reverse let's say we have a non-decreasing set or I kinda like to think of it as increasing so we have a1 and a2 and each is a subset of the next right then these two properties hold so we have um, you know if we if we union from one to infinity you know in that we could really start at any n and then union from that point on and it's going to be the same right because they're subsets if we start at a n everything before it's already in a n right so it doesn't matter where we start now also if we were to take the intersection say pick an n and then take the intersection of every set beyond it isn't that just a n right because that's going to be the smallest set so everything gets a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so when you take the intersection you got to pick what's common and all but that's just really the the n that you started at so these two properties are you know with for non-decreasing sets now let's look at the limit supremum of this set which is this but this union of a n where we start at an n really is the same as if we just start at one so we can we can put this in for here then there's no index in on this right so we're unioning or intersecting the same thing infinitely many times so you just get it back right because because there was no index but then this a can be thought of as an intersection so we put this in here and then actually I kind of reverse in the role of n and j but really it's this property going in here and we get this but this is the limit in femum of a n so on a monotone non-decreasing sequence of sets the limit supremum and the limit in femum equal and so we just call that the limit of a n all right well that's all i have for part two hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did 
and I really wanted to give an intuitive feel of what Limit Supremum and Limit Infimum of sets are because to me it seems so different than the Limit Infimum and Supremum of numbers or a sequence of numbers. Well that's all I have. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.